Hey guys, I'm back with some more info here for the core replacements for iPhones. And I'm pretty excited. Now today I've got the XCAP BMS from Injured Gadgets. Now these batteries for the 11 series and newer, if you've been watching all my videos and following this method, you need a tag on flex um, in order to correct the data when you replace the battery. So that required you to have a programmer like this um, and an extra couple steps to reprogram and update the battery health. What Intro Gadgets has developed is a solution where this tag on flex is pre-programmed to 100%. So as soon as we um, connect this to the, the cell and the original BMS, we have to boot it in a proper way. I'll say this now and I'll say it later in the video. You must boot the first time with the lightning cord, not the power button. Um, and what that does is the first time you boot it, it's going to give us a display message or sorry, a battery message. Um, and it's, it's going to then on the second boot up, adjust the battery health. So I'll kind of go through all of that, but it's kind of exciting. Um, improvement because amp centric score is as great as they are you needed to you need to program um for each one and just add some steps so i know that one of the the complaints for people that have stayed away from the core replacements um is that it's just so much extra work they say and i've been trying to like show people the full process and show the efficient uh, way of doing it and try and have people realize it's really not that much more work for the extra uh, value you can provide to your customer. And then also you can uh, save yourself some money because the core replacements are cheaper than the full batteries. So uh, I'm gonna kind of dive into what I've got here. Um, I'm not gonna be doing anything with the Amcentrics core today. This is gonna be focused on injured gadgets, uh, new XCAP batteries and also their new um, spot welder. So this is the one that I featured in all my other videos, um, welding to the, to the BMS. Um, it gets the job done, but I've never been completely happy with it. Um, and then what Injured Gadgets has here by Relife, look at the difference in these, these probes. Also, I like the fact that they come with the, the little protectors, but like they, uh, hopefully this actually can be seen in the video, but they're much pointier. Um, and I do find a significant difference in their performance. So I will show that. I'll take some videos under the microscope to, to show up close. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna go right to, like I have here SE2020 that I'm going to be doing, but I'm also going to do this iPhone 11. And the iPhone 11, I'm just going to start by showing its current battery health, 81%. Original batteries in there. Okay, so take this out. And then I've got all my all my tools kind of sitting here. Um, I like these Ineasy Tweezers by John Lee. Um, basically the ISO is just gonna break down the adhesive and allow us to just unwrap this um, battery control module really efficiently and, um, and safely. Um, one of the most common issues I always say in my videos is people damaging from flexing, bending, um, just being a little too rough with the BMS itself. So one way to avoid that is just making sure that there's no pulling necessary. Um, so I don't know, get a spudger and some ISO and just make sure that you're unwrapping this nice and carefully. Um, once you're unwrapped, we can get the rest of this tape off because it's kind of tucked in there. Um, but yeah, especially ironically where it's bent here, is the worst place to bend. Uh, it's very fragile. Early on when I was uh, testing these out, I did damage an XR1. Uh, just just bent that a little bit too much in that, in that spot. 
So now I try and do everything conscious of, of bending and just try and um, not bend it at all, really. Um, you can bend as much as you want in the uh, leads themselves, but not the BMS. Alrighty. Okay, got that off. Oh, I should grab my scissors, so... And IG sent me this stuff to review, so uh, shout out to them. And they sent me some ceramic scissors as well. Um, now these are great because obviously you have negative and positive, and if you're bridging them together with anything conductive, um, you will see sparks fly. So this allows me to, like, I, I can, with the metal scissors, if I went like this, touch between them, I'm going to short, short this out, and um, we're going to get some some uh, electrical reaction there. So I still flip it better that way. Um, these aren't going to be perfectly accurate and they don't cut as smooth as a pair of nice scissors do. So I'm just going to grab my scissors that I like to use. So I get them separated first and then I use these nice um, accurate scissors. Now that it's not connected to a cell, I don't have to be as careful. Like, I mean, you always want to be careful, but so what I'll do is I'll just come in and just trim them and uh, tidy it up a little bit. The, the reason for that is if, if you have something that's not cutting as, as efficiently, as smoothly, like, like these, and you're trying to get really accurate, you can end up, you know, uh, bending, uh, something sudden can, snap it, it can twist so i you know i just find it once it's separated just think of like two separate things you want to separate them with this and then you want to clean up with a good pair of accurate scissors um i wrap these up i just use recycle this stuff and then i'll eventually pop it in the uh the box and dispose of this properly but there is our old um uh, battery cell now let's unbox and see what we got in here Okay, so looks familiar to Amcentric's core. Ah, the one thing I wanted to note though, I did ask for this um, with the Amcentric's cores as well, so hopefully that will eventually happen, but, but we have the battery adhesive in the box. So, I mean, it's not the end of the world, like before I just had, you know, 10 packs of these just sitting there um, for everyone that I did. But it's just cool. I think it's just another cool extra thing to include in the box. Um, so yeah, I'm going to open this up. And if you mess up, you've got an extra. I like that too. Okay. supposed to keep this on there yeah okay so that was their um, their double-sided tape and oops get those out of the way okay let's stick that down Just not a huge fan of that. I'm not sure why this is so thick. I can see like a, a dotted line where it's supposed to split there. Um, but yeah, realistically, this is kind of um, I prefer those just the, <laughs> the simple strips in there. Maybe there's a reason that I'm not seeing. Maybe they're intending this to fold around after on top. You know, that might be it actually. Let's try that. Let's go like this. Okay. 
Now, there's all kinds of fixtures. I've briefly mentioned some in, in past videos that you can help with alignment, holding the battery. Um, and IG did send me uh, this a welding fixture. And basically the idea of this um, <laughs> as you can tell, I'm, I'm really not going to use this. Um, so, oh, okay, so this is 11 Pro, 11 Pro Max and, and 12 Pro Max, so that's not going to work. But basically the idea is that you're supposed to be able to, to lay the battery in, and of course the, the 11 Pro Max battery, the anode cathode would be on the side there. You're supposed to be able to just kind of lay it, lay it in there and have the contacts rest there. And then, um... Yeah, I mean, I'm just going to show you my way. I, I I don't think these fixtures are really needed at all. And I think it's just going to be easier to show the way I do it in order to prove that. So when I do it, I simply just line it up right where it's meant to be. And I'm going to leave a little expansion gap from the BMS to the battery cell, like I can get my nail in there. Okay, so that is in position. And the nice thing about doing it this way is that I know I'm not gonna, um, I know I'm not gonna have an issue with the alignment. Like if, if it fits right now, then it's always gonna fit. So right away, my first impression on these, um, and these leads, they feel much more flexible and a little bit thinner um, and consistent between the two more so. I found on the cores from Eccentrix, I was getting one much thicker than the other and they had like weird, um, where they were like, there was like two pieces kind of welded together. Um, I don't know, just some general weirdness with, with those. So right away, already pretty happy with that. Um, these are also pre-cut, so they're supposed to be pre-cut to length. I am noticing this might be a, just a tad long for what I like, so I'm going to end up trimming them down. So I noticed that when, it, like, when I fold this over now, that's going to stick into battery, and the last thing you want is a sharp metal edge sticking into that battery. So I am going to trim these just a bit. Um, just because that's the way I like to do it. So uh, one way you can do it, like you can fold this over and like use a little blade and just kind of mark where you want this to end. Same thing on the other side. I mean, also, honestly, my fingernail's doing that marking for me. So um, go like that and unfold it. these scissors again and again going from the, the uh, opposite sides not going across at any point so let's see here. Like that. okay so yeah I apparently I need them a little shorter than what they've they've measured out which is fine um, like you could just have it the, the excess loop here on, on this side, and that would be completely fine. Um, but then you risk having your cap not fit on completely right. So I'm just going to choose to slightly trim them. Uh, but I do like the idea that they are pre-cut. Um, again, just trying to expedite this process, save, save steps for us which I think is really cool. Um, so let me just set up my microscope camera. And that way I can give kind of a close look. Now on this welder, big old one. And that is the setting that I've been using it at. Um, and I did a um, customer's battery. When this first arrived, I was in the middle of a Ampcentrix core battery replacement. So I used this welder with the Ampcentrix core and um, welded 
quite beautifully, actually, uh, on, on setting one. And if these are thinner, you're definitely not going to want to do anything uh, crazier than that. So, let me try and give the best of both worlds here with the microscope view. <coughs> And the regular view, okay. Just adjust here. Okay. Now, put this on the other side so it's blocking too much. Okay, so it's time to weld. Now, as I have outlined in one of my other videos, the proper welding, uh, if, if you know about welding, you wanna create an arc. And the, the further the distance between the probe and the metal, the larger the arc, therefore the more powerful the weld. So if you really press hard into this, barely anything happens. Um, so basically what I do is I start with a hard press like that and it kind of tacks it down in, in place a little bit and then I get kind of a feel. So I, I'm pressing pretty hard, okay, still not taking, and a little lighter. And look at that, that's <laughs> so much stronger. Um, so I mean ideally you don't want to, oh, there we go, that's a perfect weld. So you want to start with more pressure and then kind of let up as you go to avoid uh, blowing through um, on your welds. Because once you've lost that material and welded through, there's no bringing it back. It's not the end of the world if you blow through like once, but um, if you just, every weld you did blasted through, eventually you would not have a proper connection. Okay. And now, you know, you look at the original solder on the batteries. Um, you want four strong connection points minimum. I always end up doing a lot more because, again, another one of the other bigger, um, more common issues for people is their, their spot welds aren't strong enough. So, um, I'll just see if this is doubled up. I'm just going to fold that down. Um, just make sure you have a strong connection and you, and you really won't have problems with with these battery replacements. So there, I'm happy with that. And you know, the step I did miss, that luckily this is pretty clean, but typically what I'll do is take ISO and a Q-tip and wipe this down, make sure there's nothing, no, um, um, nothing contaminating it. And then I will take my little grinding pen and kind of grind it up uh, and scuff it for, for a better um, mounting surface. But I'm having no problem welding this right now. So I'm just gonna kinda continue with the way I'm going. Um, Brad's video with IG, he will actually grind down and remove this top layer and then weld. Um, I think that's totally fine. It's a lot of extra work. If you don't have steady hand, there's a little bit of risk added up, obviously. Um, and then it's just a little bit extra time. The way I see it, and I'm always open to criticism or correction, but the way I see it, if this is a strong factory weld, and you can get a strong factory weld to that, you're going to have perfectly fine connection, and you're not going to have any, any issues. Uh, and th that's the way that I've done it, and I haven't seen any issues with that. So that's the way I'm going to continue to do it. So again, I'm going to start with a hard press. And then I'm just going to ease it up a little bit, ease it up a little bit. I'm just going to find the right, um, the right pressure. So there we go. There we go right away. That was a little much because I did kind of blow through there. Not, not terribly through. 
And I'm going to do one more on this end. So what you'll notice as well, whatever probe goes down is the one that's going to get the true strong weld. There will be a weld joint at, at both sides. But if I press this one down first, nothing happens, of course. And then I press this one down, much stronger than what happens over here. Um, so if I want to make the mark over here, I'll put this one down first. There we go. And um, yeah, so again, that's that's on one. I don't even want to see. This goes up to eight. I need to freaking weld my car back together with uh, <laughs> with this thing on eight, I imagine. Um, so then I, I always do a check here, make sure that everything's strong. Um, you know, like no, that this thing welds beautifully. Like I can't, I can't budge those. So that pumps me up. Um, now next, so I'm gonna, I'm just gonna have to ask exactly what I was supposed to do with this double-sided tape, but what I'm going with here, oops, it's obviously just slightly different than what um, the Amcentrix core is like. They just have one under the BMS. I think what this is intended to do is to fold back on top, kind of like the original um, tape job looks like. So I did rip mine a little bit, so it's not going to cover all the way there. But um, yeah, I'm going to say that is likely what's intended for this. Um, and then at this point, put our little end cap on here. Um, MS has directional ones where one is one side's capped, one isn't. This one just has two open sides, so it just slides right over. Oops, no focus here. So let me go back and set this back up for this. Okay. So, got my end cap on, nice and solid. Now, get one of these. And now, I used to just like really try and figure out the best way to fold these, and each model is a little bit different. Now, what I do, I just start with making sure the most important part is that you're covering this bottom. This bottom is where um, you have the potential to ground out in within the housing. Um, well, actually, it's, I guess it's an aluminum housing. She'd probably be fine, but nonetheless, the anode cathode are right at the bottom there. So you wanna cover those up. And then basically when I'm doing this to make it tight, I'm just kind of rolling it up, like get that edge nice and crisp. And then the end roll get that edge one more time up top and then now fold it back over that side and one of the mistakes i see people make is when they're doing this they're like bend this out of the way and put that in um don't touch this leave this you never want that thing to bend so what i end up doing is i just fold this over which is just extra protection for this now. And um, yeah, now we've got our new battery cell ready to go. And I'm excited for the next step because this is this is all new. So let's pull out our little tag on flex. Let's check it out. Looks exactly the same. Well, not exactly the same. It looks very familiar to the, um, the one that I'm used to. And um, now let's just make sure. So I'm assuming it's going to go this way. And then that would bend over to connect. But let's just see. Maybe it's supposed to go this way. And realistically, you're going to want to know this. Let me look under my scope, see if there's any sort of indication which way this goes. I'd rather not guess it. Okay. 
Interesting. Okay. I mean, if this was the Kion Lee ones, or Chion Lee, how do you, however you say that, they would go this way. Technically, it could go both ways. So, without getting my multimeter out, how do I... Okay, I'm going to have to do it that way. <clears throat> um, I think that's going to be my... My feedback will be... Give us a little indication of where this goes. Because um, again, these are going to be slightly different from model to model, I imagine. Um, and reversing it can definitely cause issues. So let's see if we can avoid that. I'm going to cut the video, figure this out, come back. Okay, so looking at this, the only way that makes sense would be... like so. Now, there still is people debating whether you need a tag on flex or not. So... Interesting. Mm, I don't know. Booting the first time with the lightning cable. Again, this is a super important step. So uh, basically they've programmed these or set these up so that it um, avoids you needing, before you had to connect a uh, different non-matching battery in order to do the, to do the step, in order to prompt the phone, um, in order to prompt the phone to recalculate or re-check uh, the battery health, you would have to get this message by connecting a non-matching battery. So now we have the matching BMS, but we just booted with the Lightning cable, and through Injured Gadget's magic, they have prompted this message um, on first boot up. So now once we have this, we can go ahead turn this off Once it's off this time boot with the power button and now if xcap bms works then we have 100% battery health waiting for us so let's see once this boots Excited to check this out. Let's see here. See, you saw it for a second and then it went away there. Okay, so no more battery message. Battery health 100%. So there you go, there's XCAP BMS. Um, and I can show you, it's the same phone. It has the X cap in there. Um, right now I do have the tag on flex connected and there is still some debate on whether it is needed. I don't leave it in. Um, there are some people that are experiencing issues with it, uh, with removing it. And they're saying that the battery health will not degrade properly or the battery health will reset to the original uh, battery health, things like that. And my best explanation for why that doesn't happen to me and happens to other people is they probably aren't getting the correct welds. Um, like 
pretty much all the issues like people message me all the time because of my youtube videos and they're always asking for help and usually what the um, resolution ends up being or, or the um, consensus ends up being something related to their welds or they were too rough with the bms and killed that um yeah or or they're just missing some some steps along the way when it comes to the programming but this this is super cool because as long as you boot the first time with the lightning cable again i think i've mentioned it three times this video maybe i'll mention it a fourth time boot the first time with the lightning cable um, and then after that you can turn it off boot with the lock button once you've done that you've adjusted your health and at this point what i do you can make your own call you can do your own research and you can figure out what you want to do but for me what i do now is i will remove the tag on and my reason for that so some people are like well why not just leave it because you know it works with it well my reasoning that's a terrible spudger um my reasoning is my whole point of doing core replacement is I want to provide a customer with a OEM quality solution. I want to, I want them to be able to get their replacement done, be able to have battery health active, not an important battery message. And if this, I've said this before, if the, there was a message saying that the battery had been replaced, and even if it said the battery was aftermarket, I would be fine with that. I would not go through this process. But where I have a problem with it is when it strips you of a function. And the function is the battery health statistics. So without this, you're getting no battery health. So for me, I do this to give my customers their battery health. But the reason I get rid of the tag on flex, let's think about, so, you know, we've all seen, uh, you know, the mall text column, whatever, and they will, um, they will leave out plates. You know, we laugh at it. They're like, oh, wow, look at this person. They left all these plates out and just put this back together. They didn't even put the, the battery plate on there. And no wonder this phone turned off. So this to me is equivalent to that. If you if you have this connected to, uh, if you have the Tegon Flex connected, this connection to the board is going nowhere because you've got a plate locking that in. But then you've got this connection with nothing actually holding it together not, no screws holding it together so a drop a fall that's another failure point and to me that's not going to give an oem finished product that's why i ditched the tag on flex and until i have definitive proof uh that that it's needed uh i'm not going to do it basically like talking with ig they also agree with me and they have not seen a need to keep this in um you know, we can we can guess at it, and our guesses have been that China just wants you to buy one of these every time because you think like, well, the core, like when you look at Amcentric's cores, they're like, uh, I'm Canadian, so look in Canadian dollars, but it's like fifteen dollars or give or take, depending on the model, and then and they're like nine dollars for the tag on flex. So if what IG wants to do is make this reusable, so I would save this in every iPhone 11. I would use this which would cut the cost down on these replacements by almost half. So China, I mean, obviously they would love to make $9 a pop on these tag on flexes. Like just imagine what a killing they're making in this tiny little thing. So yeah, I, I am okay with being corrected, but I've done this on family members' phones. I've done this on our work phone. I've done this on like plenty of customers' phones at this point. And I have seen no reason to keep the, um, I've seen no reason to keep the uh, tag on flex. So I'm going to continue doing it my way until somebody shows me a reason to change. Um, in my, my opinion, as the information that I have right now, the research that I've done, the experience that I've had, this is the best way to do this. So you're welcome to follow my lead and do it this way. And you're also welcome to question me and you're welcome to um, provide other experiences. But just because you've had issues removing the tag on flex doesn't mean that tag on flex can't be removed because myself and the research and development team at IG are not having the same experience. So. I mean, 
we're pretty good at these swaps. So maybe, maybe it's, it's a install error. Um, yeah, so I don't know that, that is my review on the X cap. Um, I'm quite happy. <laughs> like, uh, I think, you know, I'm excited to do this full speed without the, uh, explanation and, and kind of rip through one and just see how quickly I can get a replacement done. Um, I mean, I, with programming, it was, it was quick as it is like with, with programming, I was, I was adding like 10 minutes tearing down the, the packaging of the BMS, um, cutting, welding, programming that, that those extra steps when I got comfortable and quick with this, they, they became an extra 10, 10 minutes. And you think of, well, let's look at, uh, let's look at mobile centrics. Let's look at their, um, their battery costs. No, let's look at, oh geez. No, let's, oh geez. Uh, injured gadgets. So let's look at battery cost here and give ourselves a reason to do this. So iPhone 11s. iPhone 11s. We're going to look at the batteries. Oops, where are we? Screen protectors. Okay. X cap, extended capacity battery. So this is an equivalent 3,500 milliamp battery. 1946 American um, and 1279 right now for the BMS, the one I'm reviewing right now, with in an included um, tag on. Actually, I'm going to have to check that. I don't know if they just slipped them in the box for me or if they normally include them because I'm also seeing the tag on flex beside it. Okay, so this is not the best example because if if you do have to buy both, you're going to pay about the same as what they're selling their X cap for. But on mobile centrics, I've noticed that the cores were significantly cheaper than the original batteries, especially on like 12 series models, things like that. So if you can see value in giving your customer more of an, a, an OEM uh, replacement, and you can see value in lowering your cost while also providing a better uh, quality replacement, then I think this is a, a very good solution. And if they make these things reusable, that's gonna be huge because again, there, I mean, that was, I'm talking mostly in Canadian dollars. That one there is like six bucks. So six bucks for this US. And if your cost is down $6 every time, you know, it becomes that much more exciting to use the um, BMS option. So I encourage people to give this a shot. Um, take it slow, follow the video. Like, I mean, the amount of videos I've got just on this topic and people will comment on the video and ask a question that's clearly answered in the video or um, I'll see people in, you know, Facebook groups and they'll ask me questions about this this issue or, they'll, or I'll get tagged on questions about this issue and I'll post my video and they'll be like, they'll still just ask me the question. It's like, you know, I, I spend the time to, to make these videos. This one is for, for IG's new product, but I mean, all the other ones, I'm trying to help the industry. I'm trying to provide a solution and trying to help um, everybody kind of master this so that we can all together provide our customers with a better battery replacement. Um, and if, if somebody doesn't, you know, want to spend the time, and then, and then I'll have people that'll, you know, they'll, they will watch the video or I will help them and then they won't bother to subscribe to my my channel. I mean, I'm doing this to help you help help me help you like subscribe to my channel. Um, give me a like comment. Let me know what you think about um, tag on flex in the phone or taking it out. Um, what are your experiences? What are the pain points? Like, let me know if you did try this yourself. Why have you not stuck with it? Like, why are you no longer doing these? Uh, or why have you not yet tried it? Um, give me some 
give me some feedback, give me some uh, insight on how your minds are working when you think about this solution. And um, yeah, I want to help you guys implement this in your shops and get your customers battery health reading 100% and uh, the batter's dead um oh no i turned it off that's right but um yeah it's it's a cool solution so check it out grab the xcat pms from um ig you will still need a programmer for the regular um pre iphone 11 versions because they don't have a tag on flex so you will have to still program directly to the bms so you can get the the uh, Chanli, Kianli, whatever you call it, uh, Apollo Interstellar, but this is like 100 Canadian dollars. Um, or IG has a new programmer, um, which they are going to be sending me to check out as well. Um, and that one will, will support this as well. So yeah, again, let me know if you have questions, but this is really cool. Thank you. Okay, so unfortunately, I'm just realizing that I wasn't recording for part of this. So the, um, the tag and flex does go this way. So you're connecting on this iPhone 11, at least you're connecting it battery to here, board to there. So it'll sit in there like so. Um, I feedback, give, given feedback that I want them to make it really obvious some sort of indication which way points to the bottom which way points to the top like let us know for each model um make it really simple to know which way this goes in here um but yeah basically if you if you are not sure get your multimeter even just continuity mode will work and you know your ends are ground oops so go from the end and then touch the sides and figure out, okay, this is my ground. Now I know on the battery side, I'll do the same thing and figure out where the ground is. Okay. And match that up to the ground side on here. If you're ever wondering if you're ever doing any of these, take the extra second if you're not positive and just figure that out. Like I was pretty sure I knew which way it was going to go, but it still took a moment and just confirm that because if you do reverse reverse it um i i mean you can short short something out i'm not exactly sure what's going to give whether it's just going to blow up the tag on flex or if it's going to damage the bms or if it's going to damage the board i don't know so um yeah just another little tidbit of info there um i'm not sure where i'm going to patch that into my my video but i wanted to make sure that was mentioned These are cool. You know what? Let's take this a step further. Um, so people that are having issues with the battery health resetting. So let's just uh, let's go through this and settle this. Reset, erase all content and settings, erase iPhone. Let's uh, let this factor reset. No tag on flex, and let's just set. Okay, let's reset. Let's just speed through this. Still 100%. So full factor reset and it stays. So the way, like what I assume can happen is the battery 
if the welds aren't good, it reverts the percentage back because it like factor resets and checks the battery health and it realizes that like, hey, this is not performing correctly. That's my best guess. That is super non-technical explanation of what's going on there. Um, so yeah, I mean, the other thing is people talking about three tools not showing the updated battery health. Now, I would say that's going to have to be more of an adjustment on three tools side, because if the phone is showing the correct battery health, um, that that's personally what I'm most worried about. Um, so yeah, that's always what people say as well. Without the Tag Flex, three tools shows the incorrect battery health. But you know what? Three tools shows a non-matching battery health to this half the time for me anyways. And even like that new Ad Central check-in program, they're having trouble getting the battery health in their tests to match the battery health in the phone. So I'm going to say that's an issue with um, like the three tools checking the battery health. Um, again, if you have information that contradicts this, please let me know. But I can now debunk officially on video that factory resetting will reset that battery health. And the other thing I can debunk by personal experience is proper um, degrading of the battery health over time. So some people saying that it just doesn't decrease or it decreases really fast and rapidly. Um, my own mom's phone, it's normal on par with any other batteries degrading. Uh, our work phone has degraded normally. Um, yeah, so... I would say the only real thing that that still remains unknown is the three of tools aspect. Like, why does three of tools show the old percentage? And in the in the battery health of the phone, this said eighty one percent. And on three of tools, it's showing seventy seven. Recommended replacing. So it was never it was never correct to begin with. But um, yeah, anyways. This video is long enough as it is, so thank you guys for watching.